and welcome to Quick Wins with Jackie Jarvis, and that's me. And today's session is all about picking up the phone. Um, now, um, when engaging in business development activities, which we all do as business owners, do you ever feel stressed about using the phone to engage with people? Does it sometimes feel uncomfortable? Do you procrastinate or put off actually picking up the phone? And I think many people do feel slightly uncomfortable about picking up the phone. I was talking to someone the other day who said, I think we're creating a, a kind of culture of not using the phone. Many of us are hiding behind text messages, WhatsApp messages, emails. But the sad thing about it is that it actually takes quite a lot of energy to engage like that. I don't know whether you would agree with that, but it takes a lot of energy to kind of engage via email, waiting for emails, sending messages, and it can all get a bit intense. Whereas picking up the phone is actually a really nice human interaction. And I think at the moment, we're all craving that kind of human interaction. So my question is, what could we be missing out on by having this kind of weird resistance to picking up the phone in our daily business lives? So I'd like to ask you the question, um, what challenges do you find yourself having with picking up the phone in the context of business? So I'd like to start with Rhiannon. Yeah, this is so me, Jackie. So there's two things that spring to mind here. When I used to work in-house before I worked for myself, I used to hate getting cold calls, particularly from recruitment agencies who just wanted to sell me clients. Um, and I might even have a have a vacancy. So uh, I've got this this fear, this not this fear, this this um, thought that I'm going to be annoying if I call somebody. And then the second thing for me is it's just this real inbuilt built fear of rejection. They'll probably say they don't want to speak to me, and then that will crush my confidence. So there's two things for me. I think I'm going to be annoying, and I think they're going to turn me down. Yeah, and that could certainly get in the way, couldn't it? You making those totally. calls? Yeah. And over to you, Sheila. Well, that, that was really interesting, actually. So I, I appreciate that when you're WhatsApping or messaging in a different way, sometimes, yeah, they don't get the intonation of your voice and, it, and, and your messages can be misread. So obviously picking up the phone is vital um, if you want to be able to engage with that person. But I guess for me, it's a confidence thing, you know, and, and as Rihanna just said, um, you know, thinking that you're coming across as a bit too salesy or it's a cold call and you want to be able to get your message across quickly and in the right manner and engage with them um, and without being sort of shot down straight away and stumbling over your words as you begin to lose your confidence. So um, I guess that that's it. It's, I know in the past I've pretended to be a, an actress or something just to yeah, pretend I'm someone else, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and of course that puts a bit of a different edge on it and there's a lot more pressure when you're trying to act a role than actually just the mm, simple fact mm. of being yourself so yeah no that's useful and over to you Richard. Yeah I, I think that both Rihanna and, and Sheila picked up on um, two key issues um, so being authentic I think is, is, is really difficult and only this morning actually I had a call from someone and uh, I picked up the phone and you know you get calls with your local code on there don't you and 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 you think, oh, that is somebody I know, but more often than not, it's it's a national um, ploy, really. It's just a way to uh, get you to pick up the phone. Um, and I actually complimented the chap that called me this morning because he came across as very genuine and it, a real skill to do that with someone for the first time, I think. Um, even people you know, it's I, I feel like I'm uh, being annoying, as, as Rhiannon said, mm. um, and especially now when you know people are, have had it with Zoom calls and everything, probably the last thing they want to do is pick up the phone. Um, and is it the right time? And I think you referenced earlier, Jackie, emails and texts. I think we all think it's something that people can deal with in their own time um, rather than being caught sort of blindsided, really. And is that the best way to approach people? I certainly struggle with with, uh, with picking up the phone and uh, interested to hear your tactics as to, as to how I can overcome the, these fears. Yes, because you can see that there's quite a lot of resistance, you know, just from what you've all um, alluded to. There's a lot going on in here, isn't, isn't there, that would actually prevent you from, from being your natural, authentic self. And also a lot of projection over what you think someone else is, is happening in someone else's life, which would then therefore stop you 
from actually planning how to use the phone or even allocating that time. So what I intend to do over the next 20 minutes is give you some help, first of all, to look at some of the ways in which you can overcome those mental issues and you know, those things that go on inside your head, which no matter what techniques I gave you to use, you probably wouldn't use them if you still thought that way, if that makes sense. So it's what's going on in here first. And then, you know, then, then some tips on ways to do it. You know, um, you know, some of the things, some of these uh, ways in which you can do it to um, build those relationships and carry on with your business development activities. And I explained a little bit to you in, in the first instance about why it's important to use the phone, especially as not many people are doing it. If you think about the amount of resistance you, you guys have for doing it, there's probably a lot of other people thinking the same thing. So not many people actually pick the phone up. Everybody's using email. Everybody's using messages. Mm -hmm. And at the moment with lockdown, everybody's at home, if you think about it, or most people are. So there are quite a lot of people at home dealing with lots of emails and lots of WhatsApp messages and texts and things like that. And I think we're all finding people are harder and harder to get hold of and get back to. People don't get back to you. So there's a lot of that kind of thing going on. So the phone can actually be a much quicker way of engaging and a, and a much better way sometimes of unblocking your pipeline, your sales pipeline. You know, when you get things that you, you're waiting on um, and you haven't got an answer to and the person hasn't got back or hasn't read your email, you're sending another one or a, another message. Have you had those situations? Yeah. You know, so using the phone can actually help progress things quicker if you do it well. So I think the first um, thing to think about, if you were to overcome some of these things, if you were to be more confident using the phone, if you were to able to be more authentic, and if you had a nice relaxed attitude towards it and a way of doing it that was comfortable, if you had that, what would you actually use the phone for? So I'm just going to run through some of the things that I personally use the phone for and potentially anyone watching here today could also use the phone for. So the first one is obviously conversations that might lead to a client. Um, those could be warm conversations or even cold calls sometimes, you know, in certain situations where you can actually make contact with somebody and set an appointment up to talk to them. You can keep in touch with existing clients. You know, those people that... Um, you've had in the past and you haven't spoken to for a while yeah. and you really need to make contact with them and um, you haven't done it and there's all those barriers that stop you doing that. So you can use the phone just to pick up the phone and catch up with existing or past clients. Um, you can also have networking conversations, you know, build those relationships with people that genuinely you might want to link with um, in your business. Um, you can do things like following up, you know, when you've sent a proposal, and you're waiting to find out what someone th thinks about that and you're waiting to get feedback, um, you can use the phone for that. You can use the phone to set up meetings. That's an important one. If you want to set up a meeting of any sort with somebody and you're sending emails, it can be much quicker to just pick up the phone. You can use it for research. I know, Rhiannon, you've done mm. quite a bit of that recently, so you can use it for research. You can re use it for client care, you know, just literally find out how people are going. Um, you can get feedback from people on things. You can say thank you for something that someone's done for you in business by just picking up the phone. So there's a lots of ways in which you can use the phone to fast track some of your um, interactions with people in business. So there's a lot of good reasons to actually use the phone. Um, number one, it's more personal. If you think about it like that, we're all craving a bit more human, natural, authentic communication. We're sick and tired of Zoom and looking at a screen all the time. And it is much more personal when you hear someone's voice. Um, it's different. Nobody else, not many people are using it. And, um, you know, you, the senior people are at home. Um, I did a project recently for somebody where I actually got to speak to lots of senior people um, that I might have struggled to get to if they'd been in the office, but they're actually at home. So I got to them much quicker. So people are sitting at home, senior people that you might want to talk to. And if you do it well, it actually builds stronger relationships. Okay. So lots of good reasons. There's lots of ways in which you can use this phone. But how do you overcome the resistance, the fear, you know, the, the little voice inside your head that says, 
oh, people will be busy. Um, yes, they will. I mean, that's absolutely true. I think we're talking about truth. People are busy. We're all busy. And we don't like it when someone just picks a phone and starts talking in the middle of something, do we? That's absolutely true. I mean, there's no way in which, you know, if someone called me now, I'd be able to answer that phone, would I? And if I'm in the middle of something and someone just launches off into a conversation with me, I'm not going to really respond, am I? So, of course, people are definitely busy. Do they want to talk to you right then and there if they don't know who you are and what you're doing on the phone? No, you're probably right. They don't. But if you do it well and you set it up in the right way, it could be a completely different story. And so the things that go on inside our head, some of them might actually be true. Like people are busy. You're busy, aren't you? Mm. You know, you're busy, busy people. So I think that is a, is a known truth. So if we recognize that and think people are definitely busy and they might not be ready to speak to us on the phone when we call, but it doesn't mean that making a phone call is the wrong thing, does it? Yeah, yeah. So I think quite often when you've got a lot going on in your head, um, that says, or oh, if I phone, someone might reject what I'm going to say. If I phone, I have to be an actress, um, you know, and be someone else, you know, because, of course, that creates that slightly inauthentic pitch, I call it a pitch, um, that we none of us like. And if I phone, I'm going to suddenly turn into a recruitment salesperson or I might be phoning at the wrong time, you know, all of that kind of thing just gets in the way, doesn't it, of... Um, of us making those calls and actually us being rejected or having to be an actress or, you know, people not wanting to speak to us is all about us, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's focused like this and it prevents, it takes away the energy of just engaging with another human being. It's the same when you're selling face to face, exactly the same concept is that it, the more you think about what's going on in here and you, the less energy and interaction you've got that would be available for you to, to actually connect with someone else, another human being. Yeah. So it actually takes away from authenticity rather than adds to authenticity. Does that make sense? Mm. And yeah. lots of what we've got going on in our head are just beliefs, like just because a recruitment company operated in a certain way doesn't mean Rhiannon's going to operate like that. So it's like we take on this thing that because cold callers are so unnatural you know because they're so unnatural and we don't like it that as soon as we pick up the phone we're going to be like that but actually you don't have to be like that at all do you no. like Richard you could not be like that if you tried <laughs> unless you became You're someone saying I could be an actress though no <laughs> but it's <laughs> the funny thing is is that if we just allow ourselves, so tip number one, if we just allow ourselves to let go of the preconceived thoughts about what this means when you pick the phone up and just say, yes, people will be busy, but we're going to deal with it in a, in a certain way that recognises that. And we are absolutely going to be ourselves because the minute you give yourself permission to be yourself, you're suddenly a very natural person on the phone as opposed to a scripted actress or actor or someone who's pre-prepared something and they're reading from a script, you become natural and you become present, which is really important. So that's a, a really big tip on what to do. Just let go of all those thoughts and focus outwards. Focus, focus in on what is in it for the person that you're calling. Why are you calling them? And what is this about? And how could it be something of benefit to that person that you're calling? You know, what's in it for them rather than what's the problem with doing it that's connected with you? Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. So that's how to let go. It's how to create a mindset that's got to be open. It's got to be open. When I do it, um, you know, I did a pro I told you earlier, I did a project for a particular company where I was actually getting through to senior people and my aim was to set up appointments with this company. I was setting up a referral uh, team for a particular company. And I'd learned my, you know, I knew my opening line and everything, and I knew they might be busy, um, but, and I knew it was gonna be intense. So I used to allocate time, maybe, you know, three hours was my time where I felt I could do this because it kind of needed me to be in a certain state. 
So I got myself in the right state. I knew the people that I was going to talk to. I'd done my research on them. I knew they were the target client for this. I had a, a really good opening line that recognized that they might be busy. So, you know, I would say, you know, I, you know, introduce myself very quickly and recognize, you know, hope, hoped they didn't mind me calling and they were probably busy and I was calling to arrange a time for an appointment, you know, so I kind of phoned in that way that I was actually phoning, not necessarily to talk to them right now, but I was calling on the basis that I had something that might be of interest, explained what that was, and that I was calling to set up a, a convenient time to speak. And most of the people said, well, what's it about? And I've got time now. Um, but because I actually recognised that they were busy, I got permission to speak. I, I'd done my research and I knew something about them that I was able to um, talk about when I uh, opened the call. And I'd got myself into this state where I was just Jackie Jarvis, a natural human being that had something for these particular business owners that may be of benefit. And I was just calling to find out if it could be a benefit to them and set up an appointment. And I was just myself. And sometimes I made a bit of a joke when I first phoned. Sometimes I, you know, I did different things. And the, the, the important thing was that I was actually myself. And the result was in the three hours, usually I got three appointments in those three hours. You know, there might have been a few that weren't in, a few that I had to set up, a few that weren't appropriate, et cetera. But I did actually in three hours, get the three appointments that I targeted, my, targeted myself on. Does that make sense? But to do it, I had to let go of my issues about um, whether people would be busy, whether they would want help, whether they would be in, whether they, you know, all of that. Just, let's just do it. This is a benefit to these people. How can I respect their time? And how can I open that call in a way that's going to, to say to them, have you got time to speak to me and be very clear about what it is and the reason for my call. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the thing is sometimes picking up the phone can be the best thing that you can do. And there's certain situations when people have more resistance to picking up the phone. And it's usually when they've worked with a client in the past, they did some good work, but that client just stopped have you ever had that situation? I had one um, where I had a really good walking business coaching client and I'd worked with him for over a year and it came to January and he just stopped. You know, there wasn't any real reason that he'd been getting a lot of benefit from it and everything. And this was, last, say, last year. He just stopped in the January and I kind of followed him up a bit to find out. It was always, I'm going to book a session. I'm going. And he never really did. And I had that distinct feeling. I couldn't quite speak to him and I was wondering whether... You know, I wonder why he didn't go ahead further. I felt like I couldn't keep chasing. I left it about six months and then I was, he was on my list of people that I was going to see if I could reignite, you know. And, um, and so I kind of looked and I thought, what shall I do? Shall I phone? Shall I just phone him? Let's just phone him, you know. But I had all that resistance that you have. Oh, you know, does he really want to speak to me? Is that me being pushy? You know, even me and I teach this stuff. But I actually decided to call him. And when I called, he wasn't in. So what do I do? Do I leave a message? You didn't doorstep him, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, shall I leave a message? And we often wonder, should we leave messages when we're calling somebody? Should we actually leave a message? So I thought, yeah, I will leave a message. So I just left a message saying, you know, very much like to catch up, you know, to find out how he's doing. And that was it. I wasn't selling anything. It was just I wanted to find out how he was doing with COVID and, and everything. And a few facts that I'd followed you know, on LinkedIn or, you know, still knew about him. Very short message and would love to hear from you. And the next minute I got a, a message from him because he'd called when I wasn't out saying he'd absolutely love to hear from me and uh, please give him a call. And, you know, so I'm now going to give him a call and hopefully we'll have a chat about how he is, how his business is going. And maybe, just maybe, he might reignite his business coaching, his walk and talk coaching. But I don't know yet because my outcome initially was literally just to find out how I was doing and reestablish that relationship. So I could have not done that call. Um, but the fact was I let go of my issues and I was just a human being phoning up to find out how he was doing. And that can open quite a lot of doors, can't it? Definitely. You know, when you think about it, if, if you were 
thinking about the other person and you just made a quick call and you left a message, people listen to their messages. Mm -hmm. And the message is probably going to be heard much sooner than the email is going to be read. Mm -hmm. Another situation might be following up proposals. You know where we, we, we've sent a proposal out, we've had a sales conversation, we sent the proposal out and we haven't heard back. <laughs> And then you think, yeah. oh, the person doesn't want to go ahead then. Should I be, it's one email too pushy. I can't keep asking. I can't keep chasing. You know that feeling? Yes. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> you can't. We've all, we all have it, don't we? I'm sick of chasing this person. But if you just picked the phone up and said, you know, I, we just remind that person of um, when you last spoke. Again, respecting their time. I'm just calling today to get some feedback on the proposal. I'm sure you're busy right now, so could we set up a time to talk? So you're giving them a way out and the person might say, no, no, I'm happy to speak now. But if they don't, you can get a date in the diary. So you've respected their busyness and you've asked for feedback, not are they gonna go ahead, it's just feedback on the proposal. And that most people will be quite happy to give you feedback on the proposal so you've made the call and then you set a date in the diary then and then if they're not available. Or you leave a message. But either way, it's nice, it's natural, it's human, it's you. And you're just being you. You know, you're just asking for some feedback on a proposal that you, you took all the trouble to put together. Mm. Quite easy when you think of it like that. Mm. And quite reasonable as well. But when you put it like that, yeah, I am just asking for feedback. Yeah. If you think about what you would want, if someone called you out of the blue, but recognised that you're busy, but just asked you, um, you know, if you would, you know, you're, if just said to you that they're calling really to catch up with you, or you've got something that might be of interest, or there's something you'd like to talk to them about, you know, all of these things are quite generic, aren't they? You know, I've got something I'm not sure at this moment would be of interest. I've got something I'd like to talk to you about, but I, I know you're really busy, Richard, but can we set, I'm just calling just to, to set up a quick meeting to, to run this by you. Would that be okay? It opens the door to, to, to speak on the phone to quite a few people if you dealt with it like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think totally. I'm, in my experience, I mean, I, I've um, maybe let the bad experiences in, impact mm. me going forward. And, you know, when you've had that proposal that you've been asked for and you follow it up by phone or by email and you still don't get anything back, then you just got to put, put it down to that person's maybe person circumstances or work circumstances or that's just their way of working and not let that influence potential mis um slow communications back to you in, in, in for, for other instances in, in, in the future. And I tend to do that. And um, I, I've got to tell myself, look, it might be just something that's happening with their life, not, not you and uh, keep going really. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, oh. it, so it's absolutely because the thing is with um, what you've got to remember is don't we all forget to reply to things? Don't we all lose emails? Aren't we all so busy we can't remember our own name at the end of the day? You know, we're all, we're all in that place. And someone just picks the phone up and says, you know, hi, hi, Richard, I hope you don't mind me calling you. Uh, you're probably busy. I just wanted to have a quick chat with you to get some feedback or there's something I'd like to talk to you about. I was just wondering if we could set a convenient time to talk. And I thought it was quicker just to pick up the phone. Uh, and you probably say, oh, you know, I can't talk right now. You often do that when I call you, actually, because I do pick the phone up. You often say, I can't do it now, Jackie, but I can at 3.30. Mm. And then I send an immediate um, cal calendar invite for that call. And it just, I don't know what it is, but like picking up the it phone. It focuses makes, the mind, doesn't it? It, does, it, does, it cuts through all the noise. Yeah, it cuts through all the noise. And it also um, speeds up some of the things that you're doing in the day as well. You don't have to hang around and keep waiting. I think you've also got to have a certain amount of self-respect, though. If you try, try all these different means and you still get nothing back, you've got to get to a point where you actually say, I'm going to draw a line under this because it's just wasting my time uh, going yeah. forward. 
Yeah, you you can't keep. You know, no. there is a there's a balance, isn't there, between mm. phoning like a, the recruitment company will phone you every day, be like a dog with a bone, and then you end up pissing someone off. Um, but if you do it respectfully and you do it naturally mm. and you just do it as you and you're respecting someone's time and you've really thought through what that outcome is that you want from that call what's in it for you and also what's in it for the person you're calling you maybe have thought through your opening line depending on what the call is you've done your little bit of research on the company that you're calling or the person you're calling you know what the history is with them Uh, you found out something about what they're doing now Um, you remind them in some shape or form of you know who they are and where they're located if even if you were making a cold call you know you can phone somebody and say you know um hello jackie um i you know notice that you're um, a business coach operating in wallingford now i don't know what you're calling for and if you said that to me and then said is it convenient to i want i have something i'd like to talk to you about is it convenient to speak now or could we get a, a time that is convenient in the diary? I don't even know whether you're phoning me at that point to, to speak to me as a client. It might be a referral partner. It might be something, a joint venture. It could be anything. But I'm probably then going to say to you, just could you just give me a quick outline of what it's about? And I'm happy to happy to arrange a chat with you. And then you tell me a little bit, um, you know, I'm just doing some some research on how business coaches operate in the Oxfordshire area and I needed some views on it. Um, just needed 10 minutes of your time to answer a few questions. Could we get that time in the diary? It's that kind of thing. It's like make an opening that recognises something about the person you're calling and the context in which they're operating. Ask if it's convenient and then set up an appropriate time. So you don't have to feel stressed that you're butting in on their time mm. and if you take away this feeling that they might not be interested you're not asking them to be interested you're just exploring whether or not there might be an interest uh, or you're getting feedback or you're asking an opinion it's that kind of thing that takes the sting out of anything you know if Richard rings up and he's you know wants to get someone to be a B4 member and he rings up you know, he just launches straight into a big pitch on B4 on the phone while someone's in the middle of something. It's, of course, they're going to reject him because they won't, they can't engage. But if you do it in a natural, engaging, respectful way, most people will respond positively to you. And, and then there's the other, you know, I'm, I know I'm coming to the end of my time here, but if you've got rapport, you know, if you've got rapport, I just wanted to finish with, um, one story which was was uh, happened to me the other week. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with something called Sue Rider, the Sue Rider sale. It's unfortunately closed. It used to be run at Nettlebed and they used to raise a lot of money for Sue Rider um, with a kind of sale there. And there was a massive team of um, volunteers, a really brilliant community up there. I used to go there a lot and there was a guy that ran the bookshop, um, a guy called David. And every time I went, I used to have a chat with him and everything about it. You know, he's a really good guy and he'd been pretty much working full time. He's in his seven. No, it's actually he's in his 80s. Anyway, when we heard that Sue Ryder was closing, um, I said to him, I'll just give you my phone number. And, you know, it'd be nice to keep in touch. And the other day I hadn't heard from him for ages. And uh, Sue Ryder's closed. They've all gone off in different directions. But in the middle of my busy working day, David called me from Sue Ryder. <laughs> I was busy. I was in the middle of something, but he just called to see how I was. You know, he literally just said, I just thought of you the other day. And he's somebody, just a person that I'd met when I was up at Sue Ryder. I was like, oh, lovely to hear from you. I was on the phone to him for an hour in my busy day. <laughs> and why? Because he cared, you know, because he was somebody that cared enough to follow up and to have a chat and there was no outcome other than just to see how I was and um, make contact and I thought well actually there's a lot to be said for that if we just pick the phone up showing we cared and kept in touch with the people we come into contact with what could that lead to you know in terms of business or in terms of any other thing so I'd like to leave you with that thought is you know picking up the phone at the moment, people are at home. If you've got something genuine to offer and you show that you care and you can be your authentic self and you really think about how you're going to communicate that information um, and you just relax, this thing could help you to 
progress and grow your business massively. Okay, so I'd like to Great. stop there and share maybe for you to just share a few, maybe three things each that you've taken from the session and um, what you think you'll implement. So I'd like to start with uh, Rhiannon. Um, you really helped me think. I do not need to be like those recruitment consultants because they didn't care. They didn't call to see how I was. <laughs> they called to try to sell me a candidate. <laughs> Um, and I, then I really liked the way that you were suggesting how, 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 to, how to make a call, um, sh you know, down here, show that you care, be authentic, um, just check in and see how you are. That's not a sales call for me anymore now. Brilliant. I, I actually think I could do that. Yeah, and because you're so good at asking questions and you know how to structure your conversations, it's a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a conversation not a sales call yep and if they're busy you literally just book a time in the diary mm -hmm. yeah thank you my pleasure sheila yeah that was really good there were some real nuggets of gold in that jackie thank you oh. so um, so the first bit was about allowing ourselves to be ourselves and to be natural and present um and focusing out rather than in what are they going to think of me etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, that was really useful um, acknowledging acknowledging that they may be busy and have some sort of introductory sentence ready even if it is I'd really like your feedback on something or um, yeah so so you're changing the whole you're inviting them rather than starting to, to tell them something straight away um, and the other thing was about I'm very much a sort of person who, if I'm thinking of somebody, I will let them know. And it might not always be over the phone. So, and I tell, I tell this to my kids, and I said, yeah, if you're thinking of someone, let them know, because, you know, that might be the their, their day that they need to hear that. So um, I think that I am going to reach out a little bit more. There was, I was, I was turned down last week for something. I'm actually going to reach back to that person and ask them for some feedback. Brilliant. That's good. And, <laughs> and that, that's and also what a lovely opening. You know, I was just thinking of you the other day, you know, to phone past clients. I know we haven't been in touch for a while, but I was just thinking about you. You know, how yeah, wonderful yeah. is that? Yeah. Richard. It was interesting you said about people craving conversations. And it was interesting this morning we were just recording one of our business brunches, which is about Clubhouse, which you might have heard about, where people mm. drop in on conversations and and it's just skyrocketed in, in, in um, uh, as sort of the, the, the latest thing. And they think it's thing that's going to carry on and on and on. Um, and, and it's important. I think the point that was made was a lot of people are actually quite scared of appearing on screen with people these days. Um, and it's not for everybody. Some of us aren't that fussed um, about it. But I think it's important that some people may, maybe prefer a conversation without being seen, which is one of the big selling points I think for Clubhouse you can just turn up to a conversation in your pyjamas and may maybe half of us are half in pyjamas at all times <laughs> yeah you just don't know not the top out, <laughs> top out half. so that's one point um and I think using the, the the calls to set up a conversation for another day um is is good and sort of to build build some intrigue into what you're going to be talking about and as you say when you do that Jackie and your experience people maybe want to know about it now so maybe being patient not having to get to that, you know, the, the pitch in that call um, is important and and demonstrate that you're being patient about the whole thing. It's not, has to, doesn't have to be done there and then. And I think just the final point really is, you know, we've all got phones. It'd be interesting to know how much we all use the phones for the phone and and not for mm. the, all the other apps and uh, make use of the phone for the, <laughs> for the purpose we bought it for really. Good yeah, point. totally. I'm so glad you got a lot from it. But also, as I'm a walking business coach, I quite often use the phone when I'm out walking. Um, you know, I use the phone to have catch up calls, check in with somebody. I take a list with me and go out for my one or two hour walk. Um, and providing it's at, at the time when I can speak to people, you know, I, I often have those those phone conversations whilst walking. So, you know, doing two things at the same time, you know, we could all do that, couldn't we? multitasking my word you're asking Absolutely. a lot now Jackie yeah I am yeah <laughs> okay well I hope I hope you've been, I hope you've enjoyed the session and if you're watching uh, this session that you get as many tips as uh, the three guests that I've had here today and uh, it helps you to let go of that resistance to 
picking up the phone and making some human connection with uh, some of your contacts and potential clients. And um, I hope that it helps give you more phone confidence and a more natural way of communicating with the people that you need to to do business. So thank you very much. <laughs>